Each star, like our own sun, is a raging nuclear furnace. All life on Earth has reached its present form in company with radiation from this naturally occurring radioactivity. The majority of people exposed to radiation recovered completely, including a large percentage of those who suffered serious radiation sickness. People caught in the open as far as two miles away suffered flash burns. Yet, protection could have been easily achieved. Here, a bridge post and rail shielded the surface behind it. You duck, and then you cover. Many buildings of sturdy construction, even though close to the explosion, remained standing. The principal dangers of blast are flying glass and debris. It could knock you down hard or throw you against a tree or a wall. It is such a big explosion, it can smash in buildings and knock signboards over and break windows all over town. But if you duck and cover like Bert, you will be much safer. Betty is asking her teacher, how can we tell when the atomic bomb may explode? And her teacher is explaining that there are two kinds of attack, with warning and without any warning. We think that most of the time we will be warned before the bomb explodes. You see, Bert is a very, very careful fellow. wave then the blast tears away part of each roof let's see it again in stop motion first the light flash and the thermal or heat wave that only chars the painted outer surface of both houses then the blast on the right bursts into flame. In a few moments, the interior is completely ablaze. The fire that started inside spreads rapidly to the house itself, although the house on the left still shows no exterior flame. The house on the right, an eyesore. But you've seen these same conditions in your own hometown unpainted wood and look at the paper leaves and trash in the yard now let's go back and see it again in stop motion the light flash the heat wave and clouds of dust. Keep your eye on the house on the right. Notice how the heat wave affects it. There's the fire starting in the trash surrounding the house. Now it spreads to the house itself. In a moment, the blast wave, and here it comes. The house on the right is the first to ignite. The trash serves as kindling for the dry, weathered wood. The house on the left smolders for a few moments. Looks almost as if it will not burn, and then bursts into flame. The house on the right continues to burn. Two houses are a total loss, but the well-kept and painted house in the middle still stands. Which of these is your house? This one? The house on the right, dilapidated with paper, dead grass, litter, everywhere. The house on the left, unpainted, run down, neglected. Is this your house? The house 
in the middle, cleaned up, painted up and fixed up, exposed to the same searing atomic heat wave did not catch fire. Close examination revealed only a slight charring of the painted outer surface. The light flash and the heat or thermal wave, then the blast wave. You remember the three middle fences are built of rotten wood, unpainted and surrounded by trash. They are immediately ignited. The upper section of one unguide radio tower collapsed from the tremendous force of the blast. The guide tower was slightly twisted by a power pole which fell across one of the guy wires. Within the concrete radio house, equipment had been shaken up. But as soon as power was restored, the transmitter resumed broadcasting. The 18,000 gallon tank of liquefied petroleum gas was undamaged. Tests showed that even the connections were intact. The weighing and storage house was scattered across the desert, but the consumer sized tanks were unharmed. Power lines and transformers suffered some damage, but most of the power poles were still standing or could be repaired. The power substation was not seriously harmed. Edison Institute personnel tested all lines and found the station to be operative. The food and cases of canned goods were taken away for laboratory tests. Do you remember this young lady? This tattoo mark was left beneath the dark pattern. The amount of energy generated by a nuclear explosion is enormous. Near the crater area, there is almost total destruction from blast and heat. And now large amounts of pulverized debris and molten earth are pulled up into the mushroom cloud. And this is how a single particle looks magnified several hundred times. A radioactive piece of matter from a nuclear explosion. You would receive less radiation in the middle of a tall building than on the top or bottom floors because there would be more distance and partitions between you and the source of the radiation, the fallout particles covering the roof and the ground around the building. Only an insignificant amount would get inside. Any material with enough weight will keep the penetrating rays from hurting us. Concrete, steel and heavy construction materials provide good shielding from fallout radiation and so would two feet of Earth. And along with mass and distance, we have a third invaluable ally, time. There is a tenfold decrease in radiation rate for every sevenfold increase in time after detonation. For example, a level of 1,000 R per hour at one hour after the explosion would be reduced to 100 R per hour seven hours following the explosion. At seven times seven hours, or in two days, the level would be down to 10 R per hour. Of course, surviving a nuclear attack means more than just waiting in a shelter for radioactivity to decay to safe levels. Fallout would have to be removed from important areas by street sweepers. There is no problem with breathing for air is not contaminated once the fallout is on the ground. Fallout is not a poison gas. When fallout had decayed to safe levels, people could begin to work in the fields for limited periods of time. The reason we would be able to grow and eat food planted in this land is that the transfer of radioactivity from soil to plants is extremely low. You wouldn't worry about being blasted or burned by a submarine explosion. But watch out for the fog and mist. It's radioactive, packed with poison, and it moves fast. If you saw it advancing on you a mile away, you'd have about 30 seconds to take cover. Use your think tank, follow the rules, and you might live to look it over. 